Colby, uh, what's up? Do you want to talk about some blind resumes, one seeds, bubbles? If you can do it in the next 15 minutes, you certainly can. All right. What do you got you over wanna, here? You want to start with one seeds or bubble bubble talk? No, bubbles. Fuck the one seeds. Bubbles. All right. I don't know. Max seems pretty interested in talking about one seeds on Twitter. All right. Let's start with that then. Let's start with that. Let's go with this little yeah, North Carolina, good. Iowa State shit. All right. Probably going to be on the wrong side because it'll be rigged for the blue blood. But for, hey, let's look at the, let's look at the resumes. For audio purposes, the left team is twenty seven and seven this year, eighth in the net, sixth in resume metrics. They're six and they uh, six and three against quad one A teams, ten and six against quad one, six and one against quad two. 11 and 0 versus quad three and four. 25th strength of schedule, 324th non con strength of schedule. Not listed on this graphic. The left team's road record is five and five. On the right side, this right team is 27 and seven, seventh in the net. Resume's fourth. Quad one A record is four and two. They're nine and three against quad one. They're seven and four against quad two. 11 and 0 against quad three and four. 35th in strength of schedule and 26th in non-con strength of schedule. And their road record is eight and two. First off, the question that I'm going to ask to both of you guys, what resume do we like better? I'll fit your narrative right now because I have a ton of questions, but we could save that for another episode. Oh, I'm not trying to build any narrative. No, No I'm just saying like, I I would question. No, no, no. I'm not saying you, Specifically, no. I'm saying I would question what is quad one, quad two, quad three. I would also question the strength of schedule metrics they use and the non-conference strength of schedule that they use. I'm but just giving um, you what they use. I understand. That's what I'm saying. You, you can't be able to answer that right now. But I, I've, I, this is what I mean by talking the other day of saying I don't trust the numbers even before they start this. But I do enjoy what we're doing here. Um, I mean, who who do I think is better is the team on the right. Mac. Left. Six quad 1A wins. And not in that resume, two wins over number one in America. All right, Mac. What's the team on the left? Iowa State and the one on the right, uh, North Carolina. And it should also be known, the eight road wins are in a average league. That's <laughs> North Carolina. All right. Well, Mac Mac just gave his uh, picks for left and right team. Colby, do you disagree with him on either one of the teams? No, but I, I think he brings up a great point. I think that, that this part of my analysis that why it's hard for me to truly, I enjoy doing this game, but I'm saying like, he's right. The road in the ACC is nothing like the road in the big 12, just from a fan, just from a tough environment standpoint. Yeah. That, like there's chap. What what would you say are lit environments? Chapel Hill, uh, obviously Duke. I would even say NC State does a good job showing up. But right. other than that, other than that, maybe you throw Clemson in there. The rest are kind of snooze fest. Virginia Tech's tough to win. Oh, that. UVA is UVA is too. Yeah, but like Louisville, they they didn't have any fans show up this year. Um, so that dilutes. The road kind arc. of what I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, I, I still I appreciate what you're doing here, and I, I like this game that we're doing, and I want to continue yeah. doing it. But I also question if we're really doing this correctly. Are they paying attention to that? Because I think that matters. Do we have a metric for if the stadium is packed or not? Do we have a met- like what defines a tough road game? If you go on the road to BC, I don't think that's a tough road game. I think anyone could win that game. You know? Yep. All right. Um let's uh let's get to the bubble here. Um ooh. team on the left is 19 bubble, and bubble. 14, 25th in the net, 46th in the resume metrics. They're one and seven against quad one A teams. They're three and nine <laughs> against quad one, six and five against quad two. Clean resume no bad losses they're 10 and 0 against quad three and quad four their strength of schedules 15th their non-conference strength of schedules 44th and their road record again not listed on the graphic their road record is three and seven the team on the right here 
is 21 and 13, 57th in the net, 56th in the resume metrics, three and seven against quad one A teams. They're six and nine against quad one. So that's three extra wins against quad one than the team on the left. They're three and four against quad two. That's a losing record compared to a winning record on the team on the left. They're also clean in quad three and quad four. They're 12 and 0 there. Their strength of schedule is 32nd overall and 233rd non conference. <laughs> Their road record is also a losing road record, four and seven. My question to you guys, first one, which resume do we like better? Oh, man, I would I know, say. I know who's on the left. I know who's on the left because I've looked at my their first, resume a lot. My first guess would be St. John's on the left, right? Hold on. So yeah, what, what one do you St. like John's. better first? I think the one on the right, man. I like the three quad one A wins, and I like the six quad one wins. They don't have any bad losses either. Well, by this metric, yes. Um, yeah, I think I kind of a wash, but yeah, I think I would lean right. All right, now now you got Colby guess the teams first. So you said yes. I got no used- idea who's on the right, but a bubble team that 21 wins. Ah, man. Big East. Pitt. Oh, Big e- I was saying St. John's Pitt. So no, incorrect on both. Matt, okay. do you have an idea on either? It's Spar- Sparty's on the left. I know it's Michigan State because I've looked at Michigan State, and that's why I'm like, God damn, other than they have Tom Izzo, their resume kind of sucks. Um, I know that they, they played a hard schedule. Um, it's the one I'm really on the confused right. on that 25th place in that 25th. Yeah, place that's where I'm confused. I it, it's either I it looks like a, one of those biggies. Is it Providence or Seton Hall? Or Prov- yeah, Bang. Providence? Yeah, Providence. Max Max four no. He's four for four picking these. But you All see right. my point. Hold on, no, no, let's let's go back to that. Go ahead. We the other day we went through this exercise, and this is why I find it. I don't trust this shit. You know, not not your yeah. shit, Noah, but I'm saying like Providence has been better this year. I don't think there's any like mm-hmm. to me, if you go through the schedule. Great. I don't think I don't think anyone that covers college basketball will be able to sell me on Michigan State being better than Providence this year. Colby, let me lay out a scenario that very well could happen if I don't think they're gonna fuck St. John's because of the Patino. The money does matter. I know people will be like, Oh, they don't take into account bullshit. They want Patino and they want Izzo in. There's a scenario where the Big East only gets three teams in, which would be a complete travesty. That is, that's a fucking joke if they only get three teams in, and then say like an ACC gets more than them. Like, what are we watching if we have more ACC teams? And I know NC State's an auto bid, so that kind of dilutes it a little bit. But the Big East should have the second most or be right there. That's the second best league. Why do we put so much faith in these numbers? I don't know. I think these numbers are so subjective. And people like I one of my worst things with with college football or college basketball and I, I, like I still want to continue doing this exercise. No, I don't mean just to, to discredit you here. I'm just saying like I hate people when I start arguing college football but but ESPN's strength of schedule and I go that, I don't trust that. ESPN has a clear conflict of interest from the fucking start. Why would you ever trust that? And what is the metrics? Cause I remember la- I remember like four years ago, Stanford played 12 power five teams on their schedule. Yeah. 12. I did an article at sports gambling podcast. This is football. 12, 12 game season. They played 12 power fives. I did an article for sports gambling podcast. I said that's the hardest schedule in the nation. They didn't even have it in their top 15. And I go, what are we missing here? Yeah. You know, and it makes me question all the shit they use because I'm saying, what are you, what are we talking about here? What are, what are we doing? Oh, because they're not playing L- at LSU. Okay, fair. But LSU also plays McNeese and Army. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I it makes me question because if the, they're using there's their numbers with with uh, basketball too, it's like, well, you I don't trust you already based off of football. So, um, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, let's go to the next one. All right. For the audio listeners, uh, uh, this is, again, bubble teams. Team on the left is 20-13 and 13 overall, 34th in the net, 57th in resume. 
They're two and seven against quad one A, four and ten against quad one, six and two against quad two, ten and one against quad three and four. Their 31st strength of schedule, 172nd in non con strength of schedule. And this team is five and six on the road. The team on the right is also uh, 23 and 10, 55th in the net, 33rd in resume metrics. They're one and three in quad one A, two and six against quad one teams, eight and four against quad two teams, a clean 13 and 0 against quad three and four. 80th strength of schedule, 160th non-con strength of schedule. This team's road record is also five and six. First question, what resume do we like better? Huh. Well, if it's up to me, I think I go with the left side more. I'm going left as well. And I know who's on the left. There were two resumes that I really dove into because of who are coaching these teams. Uh, I, I like the quad one wins. I, I I think it's a symbol that you play in a really good league. And But, but um, I still like, can I would love, I, I would just love if they were able to describe to me the silver lining between the first team on quad two, the last team on quad one, the first yeah. team on quad it's three just rankings based. That's what I'm saying. It that. makes that dilutes the fuck out of it for me. I wish they did anyway, like the average yeah. net a net number when you beat them or the average net number of, of your uh, winners. Colby, you're you're, you can guess who's on the left. I'm guessing St. John's. No. Yeah. And okay. the team on the right is who? Pitt? No, 23 wins, Virginia. What? It's Virginia. Yeah, I was going to say that's Virginia, yeah. I think. Yeah. St. John's then, is on the left, right. Virginia is on the right. Yeah. Okay, and then throw in the eye test, St. John's. Yes. St. John's better <laughs> be in over Virginia. Because you can yeah. look at the numbers and that should that should count for something, but fuck it. You gotta if you watch these two teams and you think Virginia should be in over Seton Hall, you need to fucking put a fork in St. Your John's. Eye. St. John's, yeah. Um, yeah, you said Seton Hall. Um, no, I got cloud brain. <laughs> Seton Hall should I'm be saying. over Virginia too. <laughs> I think it's one of the greatest things that ESPN did, or or not even ESPN, but like they throw these numbers as fact. It's like the it's like the recruiting rankings. It's completely subjective. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but they they say, well, Texas had the number one recruiting class in the nation. It's like, uh, yeah, I'm not buying, you know, uh, I've studied enough that I don't buy into that shit, but, um, yeah. Anyway, next let's do, let's do another one. Yep. Uh, so audio again, team on the left is 20 and 14 overall 42nd in the net 37th in resume metrics, three and four against quad one, a seven and seven against quad one, six and two against quad two. They're seven and five against quads three and four. Their strength of schedules 18th, though, and non-con strength of schedules 21st. This team's road record is six and six. The team on the right is 22 and 11, 41st yeah. in the net, 48th in resume metrics. Their quad one A record is one and four. Against quad one, they have a losing four and six record. Against quad two, they're five and three. They're a little bit cleaner against quad three and four opponents, 13 and two. Their non-con strength of schedule is 343rd. Their strength of schedule is 79th. And their road record is 7-4. and four. Who's on the left? Dude, this is, these are two of the more fucked up resumes because of the bad losses. They, like, they're bad yes. losses. And when everybody sees who these two teams are, because I, I think I know who's on the left. I know who's on the right. Um, <laughs> I'll take I'll take the team on the left. I, although I, you, it's hard to defend the four quad three and four losses, yeah. but yeah, I do mm. like the, the they got more quad one wins. They both have bad losses. I would take left too, but I. I... And your guesses for the teams on the left and the right here, Pitt. For what Pitt's side? On right. Pitt's on the right. Yeah. And the left. 
Colorado. Is it A and M? Because they got some fucked up losses. Yeah, Mac is yeah. six for six. <laughs> They got some bubble. fucked up losses, man. I, <laughs> like I said, man, I was diving into this this morning because I'm like, I want to see just some of these quads and pit, pit, pits. I mean, these are two of the more fucked up teams to take the pit bias out of it. I mean, the Missouri loss is unacceptable, but then they have all these, they have all these road wins. Yeah, but at the same For time, for what it's you, worth, I have both of these teams too. out. I left both of these teams out. Well, um, I would say uh, I would I would put A and M before Pitt, but it wouldn't be by much. Yeah, it would be. It would actually. It's actually pretty close. But I, I think A and M is better than Pitt. Second to last graphic here that I have prepared. Team on the left is twenty and twelve this season. Sixty sixth in the net, fiftieth in the resume. Three and seven against Quad One A. They're five and eight against Quad One. Four and three against quad two, and they're eleven and eleven or eleven and one against quads three and four. Their non-con strength of schedule though is two hundred and thirty-first. Strength of schedule is thirtieth. Team on the right is twenty-four and ten overall, twenty-fourth in the net, twenty-ninth in resume. They don't have a single quad one A win. They're zero and three there. They're four and five against quad one. They're six and four against quad two. Fourteen and zero against quads three and four. Their non-con strength of schedule is worse than the team on the left, 262nd. Their strength of schedule overall is 83rd. Team on the left's road re- uh, record is 5-6. and six. Team on the right's road record is 4-7. and seven. Uh, I think I would actually go, man. This is a little tricky. I mean, I guess the, I think the team I go on the right, left, but not by much. I don't know. I think I go left, but you're going. So you're making a lot of arguments for teams earlier on the quality of wins. Team on the left's got three quad one A wins. The team on the right doesn't yeah, have a single right. one. No, you're right. You're right. I'd probably go back to back to the left. The more you think about it, no, but I do. I do like the quad one A wins. I think that means a lot. But the team on the right does have four quad one wins, which is good. But yeah, give me the team on the left, Colby. I think I lean left, but I mean, I would need to dive into their schedules to really shit on these numbers. But uh, yeah, I lean left. Do we have any guesses on these teams, left and right? Left, Seton Hall. I was going to guess that. I think it's Seton Hall. How about right. the right team? Because they, they got the wins over Marquette, UConn. Right? Uh, like Colorado yeah. or New Mexico or something? Yeah. Okay. That, the right yeah. to Colorado because they showed the resume on the game tonight. Oh. Yeah, they showed, they showed the game. Yeah. See, the, my my, my, my pushback right. with this, and I would put, if I was on the committee, I would put Seton Hall in over Colorado. Even though I think Colorado's yeah. actually, I actually think Colorado's got a better roster than Seton Hall. But, um, I here's where the shit. I want your guys' opinion on this. You only play your conference schedule. Yeah. And that's where to me it gets. I mean, yes, you have a non-conference schedule, but that's kind of out of your control on who's good and and who's not. Yeah. Like to me, if you gave Colorado a Big East schedule, I think they would have wins against Big East teams. I agree. You know what I mean? So that that's why it's. And I'm not talking about just Georgetown and DePaul. Colorado is talented enough. They would probably beat. Yeah. They'd get up one game and beat Marquette or something. And then they'd lose they'd to up, Xavier. They get they would, up and yeah. win three of the 10 games that they play against a quad one, a opponent. I actually think if you threw them in there, they'd probably, yeah, they'd probably do exactly what Seton Hall did. If not, if not better, or, or you know, probably similar. And that's what makes me really put a lot of faith in the, like I lose a lot of faith in their numbers because it says, well, this is that, but I'm like, man, I don't know. We just saw Houston join the big, the big 12. We saw, we saw BYU do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we'll see how Oklahoma and Texas do in the sec next year. I don't nest like, I, I think that they can prop that shit up in their favor. I really do. I mean, I still think I would vote in Seton hall this year, but I actually believe if you're trying, if, if Noah's statement is like, you're trying to get the best teams in, I think Colorado's a much better threat to anyone in the NCAA tournament than Seton Hall. Well, 
well, I say that loosely because I I like to look at like resume stats too. What I mean by best teams is strictly in the mid major conferences. I want one seeds winning because they won the regular season. That's to, that's what I mean by that. Um, last graphic here that I have prepared. Uh, this one is quite fun. Both teams have very good records. Team mm-hmm. on the left is twenty five and eight. They're 33rd in the net. They're 26th in the resume metrics. They're one and one against quad one A teams. They're two and two against quad one, seven and three against quad two, and they're 16 and three against quads three and four. They're 99th strength of schedule and 51st in non con strength of schedule. The team on the right is 27. Right, right Indiana State, right? Yeah. The team on the right's 27 and six, 30th in the net, 41st in the resume. They're 0 and 2 against quad 1A opponents. They're 1 and 4 against quad 1. 4 and 1 against quad 2. They're 22 and 1 against quads 3 and 4 with the 130th overall strength of schedule, 187th non con strength of schedule. The team on the left's road record is 5 and 5. The team on the right's road record is 9 and 4. Which resume do you guys prefer? The one on the left. Although they got they got some bad losses, though. I mean, they got three three in that. It's very even to me. It's very even to me. But uh, I guess I would go left based on those numbers you provide me. But it's pretty. This is probably the most even one I've seen. And what are your guesses on the two teams? Right, I told you it was Indiana State. Left, I don't know. I mean, uh, FAU. Yeah, it could be FAU. Yeah. Left team is and FAU. It, right team is Indiana State. Now, and if you go eye test, what do you think, Colby? I think Indiana State's better. I think they're pretty even. I think I should think that, no, they are they are pretty even, but I would in lean Arizona, like yeah. I like Florida Atlantic based on eye test. I also think I prefer their resume to Indiana. Well, States. I I would I, mean, I I I think the resume though is kind of once again it's it, I I would agree based on these numbers, but I also think that's unfair to Indiana State. At the yeah. same time, though, FAU earned the opportunity to be able to schedule against some of the teams, based on last year. Based yes. on last year, and this year, and this year they performed. They did very well in the non-con. They shit themselves in conference play. True, but they also just lost to Temple. That's what I said. They shit themselves. Yeah, in conference yeah. Play. I mean, at least Indiana State lost to a very good team that's going to be in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess you could say Temple could be in the NCAA tournament, but um, yeah, I mean. I don't know. I mean, uh, Temple would be like a fourteen. I hope. I hope they're both in. I think they both should be in. They're not going to get in, especially with what happened today. Indiana uh, State's resume doesn't really line up with. They're better than Texas A and M and Pitt, in my opinion. But when I put them up against like uh, St. John's, when I put them up against Seton Hall, Colorado, I even gave like Michigan State has a head-to-head victory over Indiana State. I like Providence over Indiana State too. I just think there there were too many stolen bids to get really deep in the bubble this year. Unfortunately, I think Noah's right. Yeah, I think Noah's right too. But I I would still say that uh, I think it's unfair from the start. 